Good morning. My reading is titled The Great Commission and is taken from Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountains where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Hi everyone and a huge welcome from everybody at Westington Baptist Chapel. We are thrilled to have you with us here today wherever you are across the world. Um, so thank you for joining with us. Um, we hope you're all well. It's been a very strange couple of months for sure. Um, I believe this is now around week 16 of lockdown and this is our eighth um, service that we've put out online. So. Um, yeah a very strange couple of months and we look forward to hopefully things beginning to ease a little bit going forward and hopefully meeting together very soon um when that can be safely arranged um also we thinking of all of you as you begin to um set foot back in society again i know it will be a very strange and unsettling experience for some also those of you that will still be shielding those of you that are going back to work those of you that have worked all the way through um Everyone's in very different situations right now, but um, wherever you are, uh, this service is for everybody and we're really glad that we can all come together um, regardless of circumstances. Uh, thank you, Pat, for reading to us from Matthew just now. It's a lovely reminder that wherever we go and as we're witnessing to others, Jesus is always with us um, and we always need to remember that. So thank you. Um, today's service is, as always, packed full of readings, um, music, um, speech uh, talks. Uh, Roy will be leading us and we're also thrilled to have Trevor Brain uh, giving us a quick update on OM and their work at this time. So thank you to everybody who's been involved and thank you as always uh, to the technical team for putting this together. Um, so thank you for that. We're going to be looking at the Great Commission, remaining rooted in Christ, um, bearing the fruits of the Spirit and also um, how we can show love to those around us, basically loving others as Jesus has loved us. Um, so that will be today. I'm just going to pray now and commit the service to um, the Lord and then we will get started. Lord, I just really thank you for bringing each of us together today, wherever we are in our own homes. Um, we just thank you that you are always with us and we thank you that you've loved us we pray that you will help us to love those around us and to witness for you each and every day, whatever our circumstances. Lord, we just really pray for the service now. We pray that um, through the messages and words that are spoken, that you may speak to each of us individually and that we may be able to reflect and um, ponder upon the messages and that we may then be able to go forward and carry on your work in our day-to-day -day lives. We thank you for Roy and we pray that you'll continue to bless him in his ministry at this time. Amen. Brilliant. Um, so we're now going to sing our first hymn together, which is Come Let Us Sing of a Wonderful Love, which is going to be played by Trevor. So thank you for that. And then we are going to move on to Rachel, who's going to read to us. So again, thank you. Um, we pray for you all wherever you are today um, that this service will be blessed to you. Thank you very much.
Trevor for playing that lovely hymn for us. This reading is taken from John chapter 15 verses 1 to 17. The vine and the branches. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask for in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. And now I would like to give a warm welcome to Trevor Brain, who is going to give us an update on the work of OM. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you so much for allowing me to uh, spend a little bit of time uh, in, in all, as part of your evening or, uh, and services uh, and your morning service at, at uh, uh, West Kington. Uh, this is just to update you with regard to Logos Hope. And thank you so much for your prayers uh, over the past few months, which has been very, very helpful. Uh, as you already know, uh, because you, uh, many of you have been on the ship, uh, we have about 400 people on the ship and we've been locked down uh, in uh, Jamaica uh, for the last uh, three months and um, uh, very fortunately nobody had caught the, vi the virus uh, because we haven't been ashore at all but now after four months we're uh, in the island of uh, uh, it belongs to the, the Dutch uh, West Indies uh, Curaçao and we've been there for the last couple of weeks, uh, hoping to finish off our certificate uh, for seaworthiness, which we need so that we can work for the next uh, year. But we had a very nice surprise uh, just before we left. Somebody phoned uh, the ship and said that they were going to make us a gift uh, of money uh, to buy, would you believe, 365 uh, tons of fuel so that we could sail uh, for the next couple of months at least uh, with a full tank which is exceedingly generous uh, so that was a, a nice surprise and another nice surprise we've had while we've been in lockdown is that £144,000 has come in as gifts to help sustain the ministry and enable us to buy food uh, for the team and also stock up the larder uh, and uh, and buy the, the essential things that we need for the 
the ministry. So that we're very pleased uh, with all the provision God has, has been able uh, to give to us and the blessings that we have. So thank you so much for your prayers. Now I, I like to give you some, uh, some prayer requests if I may. Uh, and uh, the first one is that we need a first engineer as quickly as possible. Um, over the next, certainly over the next couple of months, we, we need this first engineer so that we can carry on. Uh, the one that we've got at the moment is due to leave pretty soon, uh, so we need a replacement. We also need a doctor for the next six months as well. So if you could pray for those things. And also, thirdly, we need wisdom for finding the right ports of call to call into in the Caribbean, because that's where we intend to stay uh, right up to the end of uh, this coming uh, year. Uh, we, it's, it's really important that we find some islands that are virus free uh, so that we can stay and operate. Because as you, as you know with the ship's ministry, we need people to come on board and, uh, and, and, and to buy our books. Uh, that's what the ministry is about. And also to reach out uh, to people with the gospel. So we need that kind of uh, freedom. So uh, please pray for wisdom for the team on board ship uh, and in the ship's office in, in Germany and also uh, in the United States as well. Fourthly, we've got some new recruits we hope that are going to join the ship in September. Uh, a change over time. Uh, 140 we need. Uh, and uh, uh, we think that we've got about two thirds of those already uh, that are committed to come. But of course, one of the problems is, is safe travel uh, to the ship, wherever that's going to be in September. So we need airports to be open and we need people to be virus free uh, and, and clear from uh, uh, those things so that they can come and, and join the, uh, the ship's company. Uh, and again, thank you so much for your prayers much appreciated and and god bless you all thank you thank you rachel for reading to us and a big thank you also to trevor for giving us an update on om and the good work they're doing there and it was very nice to see you at ladyfield the other day um, i'm going to lead us in prayer now after which i will say the lord's prayer father we thank you that we can come on this day lord your day and Lord, thank you for all the many blessings you've given to us. Father, we thank you for your mercies. And Lord, your word says that they're new every morning, Lord. And Lord, we can wake and take our breath, Lord, and truly thankful, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for going to the cross for our sakes, Lord, and that our sins are truly forgiven if we have faith in you. Lord Jesus, we just pray that as we seek to go forward and... Um, Go through life, Lord, in your strength would help us to do it, Lord. We know in your word it tells us about uh, uh, Caleb, Lord, how he and Joshua went in that in that promised land, Lord, and only those two were the ones that actually followed their heart and uh, spoke the truth, Lord. All the rest were in fear, Lord, but they saw the power that you had and, Lord, gave a true report of what could be done in your power. And, Lord, we, we also know that later, laterally, how you blessed him, Lord, and gave him his inheritance as you promised him, Lord, we just pray that we too might realise that if we have faith, you will honour us, Lord, and you will strengthen us in all the circumstances we find ourselves. Lord, we just pray that um, in these days of COVID-19, Lord, we would, in these relaxing of the um, restrictions, Lord, we pray that people would still observe all this uh, the personal distancing, Lord, and see the need for it, Lord, and that, so it wouldn't be another uh, resurgence of it, Lord. Lord, we thank you that we can bring all our cares and our, our, our worries and our day-to-day -day, um, cares to you, Lord, and know that you are with us, you're, you're with us in them, Lord, and you're helping us, Lord. Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, that, that even the wind and the waves obeyed you on, that, on, on the Sea of Galilee, Lord. Lord, we just pray that you would help us to, to see that in all the uh, tempests of life, Lord, you're there helping us and um, being prepared to be by our side. Lord, we just ask that um, those in authority, Lord, would know your power, your uh, leading, Lord, through your spirit. Lord, we just pray that your spirit would work in each one of us, Lord. Lord, we think of us as a, a body of believers, Lord, that we haven't met for some time, Lord, but Lord, we are still united in our love and our faith of you, Lord, and we, 
we just pray that for at West Kington, Lord, you would continue to unite us and that you would increase our faith, Lord. And we, we thank you, Lord, for the blessings thus received. We think of Roy, pray your blessing on his um, devotionals, Lord, and the, and the rest of the people that have been taking part, Lord. Everybody that has taken part, Lord, and Lord, we just pray your blessing on Lord. We thank you for Toby and, and Becky for doing these um the technical side of it, Lord, and we just pray your blessing on them. Lord, help us as we seek to uh, tell others about you, Lord, in this medium that you've given us, Lord, through COVID, Lord, you've, you've, you're increasing your church daily, Lord, and we just pray that we might be, be prepared to be used by you. Lord, we also thank you for this precious prayer that you've given us, Lord, when we, when the disciples asked you how to pray, Lord, you said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Simpkinses are going to lead us in the next hymn, which is In Christ Alone. And Sarah after that is going to do a reading.
Jesus finds you all well. Um, thank you, Simon, for leading us in prayer. Uh, we've got many things to be thankful for. Um, we thank you to John and Rachel for leading us again, and the family for leading us again in our songs of worship. Um, the reading today is from Galatians 5, verses 22 to 24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. That's quite a lot to actually live by, isn't it? Dad will do a little message. Take care. Bye. Well, thank you, Sarah, for reading that well-known passage from Galatians. Now, our readings this morning have been concentrating really on our responsibility as witnesses to the Lord. And we have the Great Commission, which is so well known by us all in Matthew's Gospel. Go into all the world and preach the Gospel to every creature. Tell out my soul, the hymn writer said, the greatness of the Lord to children's children and forever more and so we have this wonderful story to tell this good news because that's what the word gospel really means it is good news and the good news is that though man by nature is lost and ruined and undone and separate and far off from god yet through the amazing love of god we have that wonderful scripture which tells us that god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and so we have this wonderful message to tell that there is a way back to god from the dark paths of sin there is a door that is open and we can go in and at calvary's cross that's where we begin when we come in all our sin and fallen nature to jesus he says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so we have this good news. And that is, I said already, what the gospel is. It is good news. And you know, the little word news is spelled N-E-W-S. And you know that that spells north, east, west, and south. It is good news for the world. And uh, the hymn writer said, Oh, that the world might taste and see the riches of his grace. For his, the arms of love that compass me would all mankind embrace. And so there is this glorious message, this message of hope, this message of salvation, of this message of reconciliation that God loves us and he gave his son to be our savior to pay the penalty to pay the price for all the wrong things we have done and so we are to tell that out and it says go into all the world oh that the world might hear we have to have that missionary endeavor that missionary desire to tell out the good news, to speak well of Jesus, to point to his redeeming love and say, behold, the way to God. There is a way for man to rise to God's sublime abode, an offering and a sacrifice, the Holy Spirit's energies, an advocate with God. And Jesus has come unto me and so the invitation comes to you and to me today to come a glorious invitation to come and to meet up with the savior to know his love in our hearts to know the joy of reconciliation to know that in him we are accepted by the father and so that is our responsibility this is our great commission to tell the world 
to tell our neighbours, to tell our friends, to tell out the good news. My life's work, said the hymn writer, is telling others. My life's work is telling others. Since the Lord saved me, I'm as happy as can be because my life's work is telling others. And it's not only by what we say, it's by what we do. We are to be living epistles. Our lives are to be like an open book read by many that when they see us, oh, we sing sometimes a lovely, lovely little hymn. Oh, that the world may see Jesus in me and glorify his name. And so there is this challenge, this responsibility, this great weight laid upon us to discharge the commission to do his will. We remember the words of Mary, the earthly mother of the Lord Jesus, at the wedding of Cana of Galilee, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And so I pray that you and I, each one, will have that desire to tell the good news, to tell out the way, to be like signposts, to be living witnesses, pointing men and women and boys and girls, our friends, our family, all we know and all we love, to point them to the Lord Jesus Christ, who has said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. And so we pray that we will be enabled to do that, that the Holy Spirit will equip us to do that, will give us that divine enabling to go out and tell the good news. And now the Simpkins family are going to play our next hymn uh, for us, which is O Church, Arise. And after we have sung that hymn, Toby will read to us from the scriptures.
morning. Um, thank you to the Simpkins family for letting our church rise. Um, now we've got a reading from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 10. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life, for our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perver perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is short-sighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. Our next hymn is from Trevor, and it is Blessed Be the Lord God Almighty. After this, we will hand back to Roy. Cheers. Well, further to what we've been thinking a few moments ago, we are reminded then of the Great Commission, the exhortation of the Saviour, one of the last things that he said to his disciples that they were to go into the world and bear the good news, the good seed of the gospel. And then we are told that we would not be left on our own that there would be with us the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit would be poured out abundantly upon the church and the word would be with power and in demonstration of the Spirit. And so we have that assurance. And then again, we were reminded of the position of the vine. The vine speaks to us of the power and of the glory of God. And we are told that we are like branches in that vine and that the life of the vine flows into the branches. Unless that is the case, there could never be any fruit. And we're all familiar with the scene when we have chopped or taken a branch 
off of a tree and the next day we look and we see the leaves are beginning to fail and fade and we too if we are separated the hymn writer sums up like this he says withered and barren should i be if severed from the vine but we have that living vital organic union because jesus has said he is with us we are assured in the bible that christ is in us that he is the hope of glory that the life of jesus lives in us you remember that little hymn which we sing he lives he lives christ jesus lives today he walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way he lives he lives salvation to impart you ask me how i know he lives he lives within my heart he dwells with us and so we have that assurance of the indwelling of the lord jesus of the indwelling of the holy spirit the comforter and so we are assured that there will be fruit found and our fruit is from the lord jesus said without me you can do nothing but we know that he has promised to be with us and we are reminded as we read in peter's second epistle that we are to go on adding to our faith and to our knowledge and all those other wonderful gifts that this should be our desire to strive we sing sometimes more about jesus would i know more of his love to others so show more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me more more about jesus and peter is reminding of these precious promises that are given unto us so that we may be partakers of the divine nature christ in me the hope of glory and so we have this wonderful thing that we are to carry out day by day to give diligence to make it a matter of urgency and of imp importance so that we may abound he says in the eighth verse of chapter one of his second epistle that you might be neither barren nor unfruitful but rather that you might bear fruit to the honor and the glory of his name and so he says brethren calls us into the family brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure for if you do these things you shall never fail that i might know him and the power of his resurrection being made conformable unto his death give diligence make it a matter of daily concern of urgency of prayer that we might be built up that we might be strengthened with might in the inner man by and through our lord jesus christ and so we pray that the lord will help us to be faithful to be those whose one desire is to do the will of god we remember i've repeated it so many many times in your hearing the words of mary the earthly mother of the lord jesus at the wedding in cana her words to the servants and those that were there was this whatsoever he saith unto you do it jesus said if you love me keep my commandments his commandments are not grievous and so i pray that you and i and all who hear this simple little talk will have that desire to walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing to be his servants the queen of sheba said to solomon happy are these your servants and so we pray that we will know that joy 
So as we draw the service to a close, let's just come to the Lord and, and just commit our day and our way to him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you once again that we've been able to look into your word today, that we've been able to share together. We thank you for this service. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and for the, the singing, Lord, and we thank you for the prayers. And we thank you for Trevor bringing and updating us, Lord, the work of OM. And we just pray that you'll continue to bless that work, Lord, and pave the way forward, um, we ask. We, we just ask now that you'll bless those that are struggling today, those that are finding life extremely hard, those who are, are bereaved, those, Lord, that are just in a state of, um, of anxiety, Lord, we just bring them before you. And we just pray today that what we each may have heard may be a comfort to us, Lord. It would have enriched our hearts. And I just ask that you would be with us as we go into another week. We have so much to be thankful for, Lord. And I just pray that you would, in your name today, that, Lord, that we would glorify your name and that we would just um, unite together, we pray. So I ask these things now in your name. Amen. Well, I wish you a good and a happy day, whatever you're doing. And may you know God's blessing with you this week in all that you do. And don't forget to try and show some of the fruits of the Spirit. Bye.